A warm welcome to today's talk. It's Thursday the 26th of uh, January. Now, the excess deaths in the UK are up again for the week ending the 13th of January, over 20% on the week. And I'm going to be looking at data from the United States, Canada, Australia, the UK and New Zealand, which all show an increase in excess deaths of varying amounts, but they all show it. Now, in the past, we've looked at the uh, Austin Bradford Hill criteria. Sir Austin Bradford Hill, famous British data scientist who worked with uh, Sir Richard Doll, and they identified that smoking causes lung cancer back in the 1950s. And one of the uh, Austin Bradford Hill criteria was consistency. So what they found was if you looked at people that smoked a lot in the States, they got more lung cancer. If you looked at people that smoked a lot in Australia, they got more lung cancer. If you looked at people in Timbuktu who smoked more, they got more lung cancer. There was consistency, geographical consistency. And we're seeing an increased death, increased deaths all around the world in our sophisticated Western countries. And I'm going to start off with a few graphics that illustrate this. And, and really, it is becoming quite concerning that these levels that we are seeing so this first graphic here is the United States. And of course, as always, I'll give you all the uh, all the links. So that's the start of 2022 there. Now, that's the end of the Delta wave. That's the Omicron wave, which, although it was less deadly, was much more prevalent. But we do see as the year goes on, um, we see that here we had about what we would expect. The green line is what we would expect. The red line is a statistical increase. So for the second half of 2020, we see uh, X2022, sorry, we see excess deaths. So have a quick look at that there. So the blue line is the actual deaths. The red line would represent a statistical increase and the green line is what we would expect. So for the second half of 2022, we are seeing excess deaths in the United States. And this is the trend we looked at in the in the UK as well. For the first half of 2022, there were some excess deaths, but then that increased. The rate of excess deaths seems to be accelerating, which is the alarming part. I really hope it stops soon. But as of now, um, there's no evidence that it's stopping. So that's the United States. Uh, now, this is the cumulative excess deaths for the United States. Now, this is for all the pandemic years here. So, of course, the going up through the years of the pandemic and the topping out there at about 1.2 million Americans have died excess to what we would expect. But there again, of course, a lot have died from COVID. We, we would expect this during the pandemic. But throughout 2022, when Omicron predominated, here we see 2022 here. And this figure here is actually about 242,000 excess deaths. And that's just up until December. So we can expect that to go up well over a quarter of a million in the United States. And bear in mind, in the United States, so many of the vulnerable people had already died in the pandemic. So we would expect deaths to be lower than, than average, not uh, showing an excess. Now, Canada, the data is a bit tricky, but we've got some data here from Canada. So again, 2020 pandemic year, well above the red line, which is statistically significant increase. Blue line is uh, blue lines, what we would expect that light blue line. So the dark blue line, the actual deaths, higher than we would expect. Not too surprising necessarily because it's a pandemic year. 2021 also we see that the deaths are well above the pandemic, uh, well above the average. So this is with, this would be the effect of the Delta wave in Canada here. So again, not too surprising. Uh, 2022, the data for Canada is incomplete, but at the start during Omicron, we see a big increase there, uh, as you would expect. But then as more immunity develops, we would expect this to go down. But we see that that's the red line for increased uh, significant increase. We see that the dark blue line, which is the actual number of deaths, is actually above that, which is expected quite consistently until the Canadian data stops abruptly in uh, August. Canada really does need to get their act together on data. Now, um, at the moment, although we've got excess deaths in the UK, COVID cases are actually going down. So these are diagnosed cases in England based on, albeit an incomplete survey, but, but based on a, a national survey. This, I just put this in out of interest, actually. These are the number of cases. So this was the alpha wave here. This was the, uh, the delta wave, and this is the Omicron wave here. So we see that, and this is, again, this is based on surveys. So we see that Omicron infected way more people numerically than the previous waves did. 
And those people that are infected are going to develop levels of mucosal natural immunity. So you could argue that that is, in many ways, that is a, a good thing, that um, Omicron is uh, giving people immunity, but was much less deadly than the previous waves. But that's the number of people that are infected. Uh, these are the number of people hospitalised in the UK. So hospitalisations with COVID are going down. Intensive care admissions with COVID remain low. So um, cases down, hospitalizations down, but excess deaths up. So we know that these excess deaths are not, the majority of these, the vast majority of these are not attributable to COVID at all. Uh, now, this is the proportion of people actually uh, in hospital for COVID. These are with COVID. So again, we see that about 40% of people are admitted primarily for COVID. But these are not the COVID pneumonias that we were seeing earlier in the pandemic. Primarily, it's exacerbations of other conditions. Likewise, in intensive care, the vast majority of people in intensive care, it's a coincidental finding. Only a small number admitted uh, for COVID, but the, the, what, about 25, maybe 23 percent there. But again, we know that these aren't suffering from the COVID pneumonias, or at least the COVID pneumonias are now uncommon very very uncommon the, the causes of death are other than covid acute respiratory distress syndrome which was the causes of deaths in the in the wuhan the alpha and the delta waves now this is the excess deaths here so as we know the black line is what we would expect and so for all of the second half of 2022 we do see this really quite dramatic increase i'm just blown up the Last week here, this is the most recent week up to the 13th of January. The black line is what we would expect. The blue line is attributable to COVID. The rest are excess deaths. So obviously this black line is going up because we're in winter. More people die in winter, as we know. But these excess deaths are remaining high. And the total excess deaths here is over 20%. So I think we are in somewhat of an international um emergency not being responded to as i would like by our governments in any way shape or form in fact they seem to be ignoring it as indeed do most of the mainstream media so the united states the excess deaths for 2022 although it was increasing in as it went through 2022 was 242,000 in the united states canada as we've seen um, the data petered out petered out but there was excess deaths but check out the links for yourself canada's data petered out in august 2022 quite pathetic for canada and uh, but there were excess deaths there now australian bureau of statistics is much more up to date provisional mortality for january uh, to well not a lot actually but january to september 2022 144,650 deaths occurred by the 30th of september this is in Australia. But the point is, this is 16% above the average. 19,986, 16.6% .6 above the average that we would expect. So we're seeing significant excess deaths in the United States, Canada, United Kingdom, Australia. Deaths attributable to COVID, 8,160. So we can see that the majority of these are not attributable to covid there is some other cause of the excess deaths consistency is the bradford hill criteria this is consistent with what we are seeing in the united states canada new zealand uk and and of course europe we looked at europe recently um, also consistent in the sophisticated countries australia september 2022 uh, there was uh, this was just in the month of september uh, there were 13,672 deaths. Now, this is encouraging, and we haven't got the data through yet, but Australia is referring quite a few of these to the coroner. 1,814 referred to the coroner in Australia. Let's hope we start getting some firm data out of this. There's no reason why not. Way back in September, 1,814 people were referred to coroners. Coroners can do what they want. They can order post-mortems, they can order tests, autopsies rather, as you'd say in the States. They can order all of these investigations. They have these powers. Uh, but I've seen nothing published on it yet. You would expect something by now, but I haven't seen it yet. 
UK ONS, we see the prevalence is going down. So this is people with COVID, uh, with, with SARS coronavirus too, many asymptomatic or minimally symptomatic. Uh, one in 40 in England, one in 25 in Wales, one in 25 in Northern Ireland and uh, one in 30 in Scotland. So we definitely see a reduction in this as the deaths continue to increase. So the deaths here we see uh, for the week of the 13th of January, there was uh, 19,916 deaths, 20.4% above the national average. Now this actually uh, works out at 3,377 uh, um, excess deaths. That's how many excess deaths there were. Now as we continue uh, to um, uh, respectfully remember people that were killed on the 11th of, 11th of September uh, 2021, sorry, uh, 2001, 11th of September 2001, that number came to uh, 2977 innocent people killed. And if you want to add 19 for the hijackers, you can. Um, more, so 2,977 died in 9-11. Terrible. 3,337 excess deaths in one week in the United Kingdom. I mean, no disrespect to, to the victims of 9-11. Of course not. We continue to respect their memory. But it just shows why aren't we getting some sort of response to these massive amounts of increasing deaths? We met with a deafening silence. COVID-19 deaths um, were 1,059. So we can see that, again, the majority of these deaths were not COVID-related. And actually, that, that 1,059 COVID deaths was up 842, uh, 842 on the week. So I think there's some statistical effect there from the New Year and Christmas uh, holidays. And COVID deaths were 5.3% of all deaths, but deaths were up by 20.4%. Office for Health Improvements in the United Kingdom shows it's in all ages. Frustratingly, the youngest category they do is 0 to 24, so we know that deaths are up <coughs> in the 0 to 24 category and in all other categories, age categories. And this is the same in Europe. Increased deaths in all age categories in the UK, increased death in all age categories. Uh, but frustratingly, we don't have a greater breakdown of the data, so we don't know what it's 0 to 12s or 0 to 5s or what it is in the UK Office for National Improvements data. We just know there's an increase in deaths in the 0 to 24s. In the European data, it was 0 to 14s, we noticed there was an increase in deaths and in all other older categories. Society of actuaries that we noted in the UK. Um, again, we noted that in the 20 to 44 year old age range in 2022, 7.8% excess deaths. Huge amount. Second half of uh, 2022, there was uh, 26,300 excess deaths up from 4,700 in the first half. So we see that this is accelerating. So first half of 22, 2022, 4,700. Second half of 2022, 26,300. And now we're up to a 20.04%. We have looked recently also at Euro Mono data, uh, poll, uh, pooled Euro Mono data, all cause mortality, showed uh, elevated levels of excess mortality. Overall, that's in all areas. Again, this consistency, remember this Bradford Hill criteria, we're seeing in all European areas. We're seeing it in all age groups and we're seeing it in data from 25 European countries and subnational regions compared to the average levels from pre-2020. So we are actually seeing this everywhere. Now, the data in New Zealand I did find particularly difficult to get, but I have got some. I did look on this official Ministry of Health site, and uh, when I've checked it, they last updated that in 2016. I've just checked it again tonight, and they've updated it for 2017. So uh, New Zealand official stats are uh, lamentable. But I did find another site here, Stats New Zealand. Um, and the year ending September 2021, uh, there was a total of uh, 3,400, uh, three, th sorry, 30, 34,578 excess deaths. Uh, in 2022, that was up to 38,000. And, and this is roughly consistent. We're seeing about a 10% excess death rate in New Zealand from various sources. 
uh, for the year 2022. But we can say definitively that for pretty well seven months now in the UK, um, excess deaths have been uh, increasing. I really hope this stops soon, that this is some sort of blip. Uh, but even if it did stop tomorrow, this demands an explanation. And we're not getting one. We hear nothing from the chief medical officer. We hear nothing from the chief scientific officer. We hear nothing from the prime minister. And we hear essentially nothing from national media. It's left to eccentrics in their back room to try and publicise the fact that thousands of people extra are dying every week in my country and probably in your country as well. We need answers. There's consistency. The Bradford Hill criteria are met. This is all over the world. We need answers to this. I strongly suspect there's a common factor playing a role in these excess deaths in US, Canada, Australia, UK, New Zealand and 25 European countries and subnational regions. I'm going to leave it there before I say anything else. And uh, thank you for watching.